Hello everybody, so recently I've been watching a lot of television, and no I don't mean free television on my television, because quite frankly TV licenses are a scam. So instead of being forced to pay for the piece of garbage that is the BBC, I instead bought YouTube Premium. Little did I realise that you don't actually need it for the show I bought it for. Yes that's right, I decided to watch every single episode of the first season of Liza Koshy's show Liza On Demand. And as you can tell from the title and thumbnail of this video, it put me through a lot of emotions. Now this isn't the only YouTube series that I've watched. Recently I made a video on Lele Pons's show, and and you'd know that if you're a subscriber. You may also know that if you're not a subscriber, but quite frankly, I do not care about your opinion if you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel. So earn my respect by subscribing right now. Now I had a slight issue with my video on Lele Pons' show. In short, I was just a bit upset that I couldn't react to more of Lele Pons' show because I didn't want to be sat in front of a camera for hours because, well, just watch the last E-Boys video. It's hot in this studio. The only thing I can think about is the absolute- Oh my God, I want to die. When making YouTube videos, I apparently sweat more than Bill Clinton in a pizzeria. So today we've actually gone for something a little bit different. I teamed up with my editor and fellow YouTuber Cynic Snack. Subscribe to his channel if you want, but also remember that this channel's more important. Basically, we sat down on Discord off camera and reacted to every single episode of Liza On Demand season one. Now you may think that's not much of a feat given that it's just eight 20 to 25 minute episodes, but no, somehow we ended up recording for over five hours. Forget making a meal out of it. Quite frankly, we built the fucking banquet and let's just say we weren't excited for the hours to come. Shall we do it? Uh, I, I, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> now in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through all of my positive and negative opinions of Liza Koshy's show and then follow up those opinions with my immediate reactions when I saw it for the first time. If you like this format, leave a like. If this video gets 100,000 likes, Cynic and I will return to Discord. We'll watch the second season of Liza Koshy's show and we'll probably make more videos like this. Okay, so a little summary of Liza on demand. Liza is a clumsy 23 year old who lives with a gay man who loves scarves. She also lives with a woman who has an Instagram famous dog called Bark Pool. Ah! Cynic and I thought that, that was a pun at first First, but there's no celebrity called Mark Paul. So it's a bit of a wasted opportunity, quite frankly. Liza works via an app called Taskit, where she essentially runs errands for people. The general goal of the series is that Eliza wants to become an elite tasker to get extra perks on the app. And in the process, she gets in some rather wacky scenarios. Why is she trying to fight in front of all these kids? can't wait to walk you through them. Now the show itself isn't really a concise story that's split into eight. It's more eight separate themes with the overarching theme of, oh, Liza wants to become an elite tasker. No, I don't think that works in the favor of the show, at least in the early stages. The first few episodes just feel like ham-fisted discussions of social issues. You could pretty much sum them up as the feminism episode, the love episode, the anti-Trump episode. Now all three of the episodes that I've just mentioned have these moments which can only really be described as textbook travesties. Their sister and her name is Kelly. They just started hormone Therapy and we wanted to be supportive friends, so we educated ourselves on the correct behavior. We didn't want to be invasive by questioning you yesterday in order to respect your journey. Wow. This is so patronizing. This is like a, an educational video. Yeah, it's literally that the dialogue has been taken word for word out of a textbook. We were just trying to educate ourselves about the issue. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's tempting to romanticize simpler times, but those times weren't the best for everybody else. You're using a huge platform to spread the message of hate and oppression and subjugation. Here comes the textbook. Sorry, sorry. Where did this eloquence come from? Yeah. Where Where has this been this whole time? She's been like, oh, duh, me stupid. In like earlier v fucking episodes where she goes, ha ha, pickle. Ha, oh, me stupid, me can't eat sandwich. Oh, oh, oh the boo 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 boo. Then she turns around and she's like, oh, well, the subjugation. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine's Day doesn't have to be about some narrow definition. Love? Oh my god, again. Textbook time. Oh my god! The writers have clearly just grabbed their nearest social justice textbook and copied and pasted paragraphs into dialogue. It just upsets me because I find all of these opinions at least somewhat agreeable. But is this the only way they felt that they could approach these issues? No one ever discusses stuff like this. In my opinion, when the writers don't feel like they need to tackle a social issue head on, they make their best content. In episode seven, for example, I actually laughed twice. And anyone else who cares to look their personal best? <laughs> All right, I'm What's your skill? My skill? I mean your crying skill. What what sets you apart? Oh. I do thug tears. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. Now it may surprise you that I made a point of these moments. It's a comedy. It's meant to make me laugh. The laughs were few and far between to say the least. And when I did laugh, it never really felt gratifying. For example, with one of the moments I just showed you, they took a really funny concept and just beat it to death. If you can't, ball, hashtag, wordplay. <laughs> They've ever done it a bit Tissue there. drop. Yeah, they should have just left it 
At they should the have first. just cut to the next scene. That yeah. would have been really funny. Cynic and I both agreed that the most comedic moments came from secondary characters. For example, our very first laugh in our recording was in the second episode of the show. Of course, but you're also a total stranger. So why should I do anything you say to begin with? Because it would please you? Because that's rather presumptuous and also sexist. You, you limpy bitch. <laughs> 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 All right, that was actually oh. good. That was actually good. I like that. That was quite funny. This moment's funny because it just comes out of nowhere. But the guy that makes you laugh is the antagonist of this episode. The episode itself is called Smile, something that he rudely tells Liza to do. It made me feel like I shouldn't be laughing at what he does. I'm meant to be laughing with Liza. You know, this guy that's made me chuckle is the asshole. But obviously he made me laugh, so they had to give him another textbook travesty. When I tell a woman to smile, I'm acting selfish and entitled because I'm expecting her to be subservient to my unsolicited instructions. Exactly. And I'm also being sexually aggressive by behaving like she exists solely for my male gaze and my personal pleasure. Yeah. Oh my God, oh my God. Fucking B-Tech gender studies here. I feel like I've just been choked with a fucking big, big gender studies MA dildo. <laughs> he doesn't actually learn anything. He ends up catcalling Liza again. Damn girl. You have a great ass. So basically that whole interaction was pointless. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the moral that we can now take from this episode? Men are shit. So don't try to be reasonable when you're dealing with men. No. Uh, lecture them with your B-Tech knowledge of gender studies and then they'll be dickheads anyway still. Yeah. So basically don't bother, men can't change. <laughs> <laughs> but how can we expect him to learn anything when Liza doesn't learn anything herself? I'm just gonna, yeah. Just gonna kiss her. Thanks. Gonna kiss her. You know, I really appreciate that. Oh my god! <laughs> no, no. So fast. You should try out for the track team. What? Maybe in the spring. What? So when some random guy in the street says smile more, she gets all uppity. Mm -hmm. A man literally just tried to sexually assault her. And she's just like but smiling But he complimented about it. her yeah. and she's cool with it. And to make that clip worse, right? That clip is from episode three, which is an episode about Liza being a late bloomer. She wants to give high school another shot. But in doing so, she strings along a minor and shows physical signs that she's attracted to him. Yeah, that's right. No. I got you nominated for homecoming queen. It's not him. Go on. Yeah. Oh my God. God, she's literally giving suggestive signs. She's actually <laughs> This body language. What is going on? Now, I'm not calling Liza a pedophile, okay? I'm calling her character a pedophile, who also happens to be called Liza and be based off of Liza's personality. Just something to know, all right? Just something to know. Just something to keep in mind, okay? Now it's an obvious inconsistency, okay? These two moments that she has with men, somehow this one's fine, this one isn't. That isn't the only inconsistency in the series. Perhaps the biggest inconsistency for me is this really jarring moment in episode five. Hey kid, here you go, you have a great day. PTSD forever. <laughs> Let me be straight. What? Oh, what the fuck? What? what? When did this what? happen? What? Why have they just we're changed? Over, <laughs> we're over halfway through the season. Why is she breaking the fourth wall? Did the creators just watch an episode of Malcolm in the Middle, like halfway yeah. through shooting the show and was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Let's just completely copy that. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Now this moment is a shock, okay? And obviously Cynic and I are going into this show poking holes at it. I don't think it's a massive issue to break the fourth wall as well. But in my opinion, if you're gonna break the fourth wall, at least keep it within the confines of the rules that you set out. Where's what are you doing? I'm breaking the fourth wall. Well, I did it in Ferris Bueller and that movie is the shit, so I'm gonna be doing this all day. So it's just a little bit that she does in front of her friends, right? Wrong. She does it on her own. Some old woman does it with no prior knowledge of the fact that it's a bit. Be your own hero. That is a good place to start. Oh. God. The most inconsistencies, however, are found in the last episode of the season. Probably the most mentally trying episode that we watched. Basically, the final episode is just a rip off of The Hangover. Liza has one task left to do in order to become an elite tasker, but unfortunately her roommates took her out for a very heavy night of drinking the night before, and they have to retrace their steps in order for her to find her phone. Now for the whole episode, Liza's roommate has a briefcase handcuffed to his wrist. It turns out that said briefcase was from an escape room that they broke out of without permission. So they didn't complete it, okay? They just left through the fire escape and stole the briefcase. They come back the next day and the owner is very angry at the fact that they just ran off and he makes them do it again. But the briefcase just isn't involved whatsoever. And then right at the end of the episode, they're trying to find out who Aubrey is. We don't know who Aubrey is either. Their name has just been mentioned throughout the episode as someone that they spent the night with for some reason. And then Aubrey turns out to be Drake? <gasps> we were with Drake last night? In his private that. life, Mr. Graham prefers to go by his given name. Aubrey! 
Oh. Are you fucking serious that they were hanging out with Drake all night? And they yet every it. person, every normal person they bumped into that saw them together referred to him as Aubrey and didn't realise that he was in fact Drake, <laughs> literally the most famous person on earth. <laughs> oh, your friend Aubrey. Are you joking? The most annoying thing about this episode is yes, it's a ripoff of the hangover formula. But when you're copying something so obviously, I think you have two choices. Ignore it. Don't talk about how it's a complete fucking ripoff because it is. But it's only one episode of eight. Or make an actual funny reference to it. They don't do either of those things. They start and finish the episode by admitting it's a massive ripoff and it's not even funny. Dude, what did we do last night? How did I break my arm? I don't know. Oh, it's like that movie, The Hangover. Uh. Well, how did all of this crazy stuff happen? I wonder if we're going to find out slowly what happened. Through flashbacks throughout the entire episode as they discover more clues as to the mystery of what happened last <laughs> night. <laughs> Wait, I remember something. What? This is exactly like that movie with Bradley oh, Cooper. Oh, American Sniper. Oh, oh my God. God. No, the one with the, the, he has a hangover. They're Gosh, even uh, just gonna blatantly admit that this idea is completely unoriginal. Wait, guys, I think I remember what Bradley Cooper movie this was like. Silver Linings Playbook. No. Uh, it's funny when the characters are stupid for the purpose of a joke. <laughs> the one thing that Liza did really well throughout the series was she was herself. And by that, I mean she was incredibly short. Something I can't relate to, by the way. I'm going to be finishing this video like this. Sometimes they use shots to make her look taller than she actually is. Other times the shots are framed in really funny ways. I love the shot here. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. <laughs> My favourite moment regarding her height, however, is in episode two when she compares herself to Bruno Mars. Yesterday I was a Bruno Mars impersonator for a bar mitzvah. I'm the same height as him. Right, no, right, I challenge that immediately. <laughs> Bruno Mars. Alright, we're we looking this up. How Bruno tall is Mars height. height. <laughs> 1.65 metres. So he's already Yeah, no, he's already a good ten, 10 centimetres centimeter on her. Convert this bitch. Bruno Mars is five foot four. Liza Koshy is four foot nine. Liza Koshy is a dwarf. Bruno Mars isn't. I want to discuss the future of Liza's show and how I think the show can be improved. I'm fully aware that it does already have a future. And don't forget, okay, you'll get to see me react to it if this video gets 100,000 likes. I feel like they should invest a little bit more into the show. For example, with fight choreography. Come on. Hey. No. Oh, he tried so hard. That was a really well choreographed action scene. Oh my god, that was pitiful. He's like, oh no, no. Oh, some action that isn't actually going to happen. Oh. oh, they really were lacking a fight choreographer, aren't they? I feel as if moments like this could be really comedic. Let's not forget that Liza Koshy is four foot nine. I feel like if you really choreographed these scenes, they could be quite funny. Another thing is continuity errors. Now these things happen in most shows, but sometimes it's just so incredibly jarring. And I think it's something the producers could work on. She's really fucking that sandwich up. Look at the state of it. There's like cheese yeah. hanging out. <laughs> Yeah, I just mash it into my face and hope that some of it goes in my mouth. There's a different amount on the plate every single shot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, make that one idea for the- Oh no, this is terrible. <laughs> the continuity is awful. It's, it's literally dreadful. like- dreadful. Skipping back and forth between two completely different obliterated sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. All in all, I'm aware this show wasn't made for me. It most certainly wasn't made for Cynic. I definitely recommend it to people who are fans of Liza. There are moments you'll really enjoy in the show. Old tropes of hers that are modernized and well-produced. Moments of physical comedy that I don't particularly enjoy myself. But that may well be your thing and I'm not hating you for that. Look, I'll even do a funny bit where I go, ooh, ow. With that in mind, please do leave a like down below. 100,000 likes and uh, Cynic and I will do this again. I promise you he really wants to do it. We've spent six hours. That's disgusting. Six hours doing this. I feel cheated and filthy and sad that this has happened to us. And with that being said, 100,000 likes and we do it all again. <laughs> no, please no. <laughs> I've really enjoyed making this video. It's taken ages, but it's been really enjoyable. And I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Make sure to subscribe. I want to hit 2 million subscribers by the end of the year. And yeah, now it's time for you to stop watching this video and go and watch another one, preferably made by me.